Hi friends, today we are going to see a topic in the applications of DSP called as oversampling A to D converters. The name itself indicates that we need to oversample a signal. What do you mean by oversampling? Oversampling means to increase the sampling rate. Okay, why we need to increase the sampling rate? Actually, we need to increase the sampling rate to use a low resolution uh, quantizer. Now, it really uh, does not match. We say that if we increase the sampling rate, we need to increase the number of bits to represent. But now I'm saying that to increase the to have a low resolution quantizer, okay, we have a low resolution quantizer and using that low resolution quantizer, if I wanted to have a good uh, quantization level, then I need to increase the sampling rate. How does how it will happen or, or how can we do this? So the basic technique that we will be doing is we will be using a differential signal rather than a normal X of N. Oversampling also reduces the dynamic range of the input signal. What do you mean by dynamic range of an input signal? The dynamicity, that means the change in the input signal, okay? So when I oversample a signal, okay, the samples or the, the distance between the two successive samples is very small. So the difference between the two samples is very small, isn't it? So if I take the difference between the two samples, which are very close to each other, I'm sampling it at a higher rate. So if they are very close to each other and I'm sampling at a very higher rate, okay, so the difference between the two samples value will be less. So what I have done in between two samplings, if between two samples, the dynamicity or the rate of change is reduced. So now if I take the difference between these two samples, what is going to happen? If I reduce this distance between the samples, the dynamicity reduces and I require a lower number of bits to represent this difference. So instead of quantizing or instead of giving the representation of bits to the individual uh, sample, now I will give the uh, sample, uh, I'll give this, I'll assign the codes or I'll assign the bits of sample to a uh, different signal. So we will be considering different signal and we are going to quantize this different signal. So wherever there is a difference, okay, signal, I will quantize the different signal rather than quantizing the uh, uh, individual sample. Okay, so what this will help? Wherever there is a great dynamicity between the two, uh, mm, we say samples, there we can uh, use uh, a higher rate of uh, bits. Okay, so what is going to happen is I can use lower bits, that means low resolution, and I can provide a good quantizers. Okay, so how we can achieve this, or what is the process to achieve this, or what is the maths behind to achieve this? The simple thing is that the variance of, okay, I'm saying variance, the variance of a quantizer is given as delta square by 12 or the error variance due to quantization process is given by sigma e square, which is delta square by 12 and delta depends on the full scale range, which is R F S upon 2 raised to b plus 1, okay, <coughs> where 2 raised to b plus 1 is a number of bits used to represent the fractional number. Now, let's say that the variance of or the standard deviation of the input uh, or the variance of the input is given as sigma x square. And we know that the variance of uh, in the input or the standard deviation of the input uh, is in accordance or is proportional to the number of bits or we can say reverse i said reverse the number of bits is proportional to the variance or standard deviation in the signal that means if i have a very high variable or very high changing signal what i need to do i need to uh, have assign i need to assign more number of bits so that i can pick up the minute changes in the input if for example my input is varying slowly then i don't need to actually assign too many bits to the uh, signal instead i will assign less number of bits and i can 
uh, if I assign less number of bits, then also it will suffice. Okay. So the variance or the standard deviation or the deviation in the input signal uh, is proportional. The, the bits that we assign is proportional to the deviation of the uh, input signal. Okay. Now, uh, so we can say that sigma x square is proportional to delta where delta is equal to 2 raised to minus b where b is the number of bits okay so let's say for a fixed s n or s q n r where it is stands for standard oh, sorry signal uh, to quantization noise ratio if it is fixed which is denoted as sigma e square upon sigma x square okay uh, a reduction in the variance a reduction in the standard deviance de deviation or variance in the input okay if this is fixed if i'm reducing this then what will happen then the number of bits will also be reduced isn't it so if i have a fixed snr okay my snr is fixed so i can reduce the number of bits by changing the variance of the input signal that means i'm changing the uh, dynamicity of the input signal how can i change the dynamicity of the input signal by keeping the samples very close to each other how i can keep where samples very close to each other or what do you mean by samples keeping very close to each other that means the sampling rate is high okay so i if i increase the sampling rate the number of the dynamicity decreases and the number of uh, bits required to represent the deviation is also less so that is how we get the advantage of uh, an oversampling of number let us consider a <coughs> different signal let me denote the different signal as sigma sorry d of n which is nothing but x of n minus x of n minus 1 that means i'm taking the difference between the two successive samples just next two successive samples then if i take the variance of d then i will get expectation of x of n minus x of n minus 1 the whole square if you take the if you do the calculation the calculation will be turning out to the value as this now what is sigma x square sigma x square is the variance in the input signal gamma xx of 1 is auto correlation function it's an autocorrelation function for m is equal to 1. Autocorrelation function for m is equal to 0 is sigma x square again. So I can say that gamma xx of 0 is nothing but sigma x square. It is one and the same. Okay. So now if suppose uh, my sequence. Okay. If suppose I consider if my gamma xx okay to be greater than 1 okay uh, sorry greater than 0.5 let's say then my sigma d square which is equal to 2 times of sigma x square into 1 minus gamma xx of 1 okay if this goes greater than 0 0.5 of course gamma d square will be less than gamma x square okay so this is a better condition so what is happening so instead of now sampling or uh, assigning bits to the variation in the uh, input signal i will put the vari uh, i'll put the number of bits for the variation in the uh, uh, for the dynamic uh, sorry the different signal so what will happen less number of bits will be required because here the dynamicity is less that means what is happening as the correlation goes high that means if i keep the if I keep the two samples very close, the correlation between them is very high. It will be greater than, if it is greater than 50%, of course, gamma D will be less than gamma X. 
it will be only less or it will be only equal or greater gamma d will be greater than gamma x only if the uh, correlation is very low or zero okay so this is how we improvise the uh, sampling or we can use a good um, a low resolution quantizer to uh, uh, to quantize at a higher rate let us understand or let us uh, let us make uh, uh, the generalized block diagram of oversampling a to d converters so a general block diagram says like this i get the input which is my x of t okay and i pass it through an anti aliasing filter which is then passed through an sdm block which is an integrator sdm stands for sigma delta modulation okay so we perform a sigma delta modulation which is nothing but an integration or a low pass filtering process and then we get the signal okay which we pass through a digital low pass filter okay an output of this this is this is a one bit okay this is a, this is a one bit representation here b is greater than 1 this is x equivalent of n okay now the same will go as the reverse order first i will get f of this is my at f of n so this is a new sampling f of n which is passed through a digital filter then which goes to a, a sampling uh, which brings down the sampling frequency fs then we have again a digital sdm this is an analog sdm which is a one bit representation at a rate of fs which then is passed through the sampled data okay a low pass filter and then the smoothing filter a smoothing filter now in this this one is the analog section so output will be again x of t okay and in this this is my analog section and this is my digital section over here this is the digital section and this is the analog section so this is how a basic block diagram of an uh, oversampling a to d converters uh, look like so whenever they ask you for an oversampling a to d converter you have to consider um, uh, why it is needed then how it benefits by oversampling that you have to show that the difference variance goes low so you can represent lesser number of bits and low resolution quantizer can be used to represent a, a, a signal and then you can show this block diagram so this will actually help us uh, help you to write a very good answer in your paper i hope you have understood what you mean by an oversampling a to d converter thank you